Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? We are on a new job. So, on this new job, let me grab a file here. On this new job, we'll look around. It's pretty nice timber in there. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of ground. Real sandy soil, seems like slow growing stuff. Uh, this is a ATV place and mud bog place. We're over in Ohio now. And um, they're gonna put a power line. You can see, see this one right here above our heads. They wanna get it out. This is their hill climb. And they wanna cut a designated right away for the power line up to a campground up there. So that's what we're gonna do. It's only about 100 feet wide, 120 feet wide. We just brought the dozer. We're going to do a little bit of old school style logging, stuff I used to do back in the day. Um, no buck saw. No uh, loader. We're going to hand buck everything. And the picker trucks are going to grab it. The first thing I want to do is I want to show you a problem I've been having with a certain particular chain lately. Now they quit making this chain, so... And I think that's part of the reason why... I was having problems. Let's get her off of here. You gotta clean the, the schmutz out of the bar. Put a new chain on it, and I'll show you what I do to a new chain. It's most any new chain, honestly. It's not just this style. So this is the Oregon. Can you see me? Alright, this is the Oregon 72 LGX chain. This is what I always used to run. Uh, they've obviously since done away with it. Now it is Oregon 72 EXL is what replaced it. Um, I've done reviews on that. It has gotten better since I did the review on it. Out of the box grind was very poor. I mean, you guys know I like to touch my chains up, and I'm going to show you how I do that here in just a minute. But I like to touch my chains up right out of the box. And if I can find it, I'm not just staring blankly at this. I had a real problem. Here it is. Had a real problem with the the last runs of the LGX. I had a real problem with the straps breaking. See that? He set crack. And believe it or not, I finished that whole job with that strap broke. I discovered this the other day when I was cutting firewood. So, which sucks. There's a lot of life left in that chain, even though I did hit a lag bolt in a tree. But I can get a new strap for that at the local store. I don't have the chain breaking tools. So I might drop it off in a little saw shop below the house and they'll, you know, put a little tie strap on it, but whatever. Okay, so now what we're going to do is a little bit of bar maintenance. I got this little tool and that's not what it's designed for. This is the executive pocket pow. It's got like angles. And it's got millimeters and inches. It's got conversions, decimal equivalents, all that crap. You know what I mean? But what do I do with it? I clean my bar with it because it fits down in that groove real nice. So you got to get in there. You get this buildup of oil and dust and bark and things. You got to get that crap out of there. No, it's no good man and see where it's hanging up right now is the oiler hole so most of you probably already know this but that little see this hole here is where your tensioner goes and this hole here up top that little one that's where your oil gets pumped into the bar people ask me do I flip my bars no because I use the top side of the bar just as much as the bottom side of the bar now, if it was a saw that I was only bucking logs with or something like that, or only cutting firewood, yeah, I'd flip it. But I use the top of these bars. I actually, I feel like the top wears out before the bottom on me because of all the plunge cutting and back cuts and all that stuff I do. So we clean those out, clean all that out. And this bar is at the end of its life. Believe it or not, this is the one that got flung out of my hand. You saw in that last video a little bit back. Didn't bend. They're great for that. Sugihara, I like them. I run a two foot bar, 50 gauge, 84 drive lengths. Next thing you wanna do, see the oiler pocket on the saw that fills up with dust also. 
a uh, little screwdriver or something get get as much of that out of there as you can there it is okay now let's put our chain on there this is 72 LGX. This is, I buy a bunch of chains. These are just leftovers. New old stock, they call that. Look at that. Ooh, nice and shiny. I've often wondered why when they make these chains, why there's so much play in the rivet, but that's just what it is. Uh, what's the best chain out there? I don't know. Whatever chain you like running the most. Um, I do know still makes a mean chain. It holds an edge very well. The EXL holds a, this Oregon EXL holds an edge very well, but the tooth, when I first got them, seemed to be over hard, too hard. And it's uh, very hard to sharpen. Um, the out of the box grind on the LGX, this is all kind of useless information unless you find some old stock, is uh, not bad, but it's not to my liking. Uh, right out of the gate, what I like to do is take about a stroke or two off of each tooth. Why, you ask? It just cuts better. And then I'll take one pass off the top of each raker. The raker being this little guy here. And then there's your cutter head there. You guys probably all know all this stuff. But if anybody's watching it doesn't, or is not familiar with it, you know, it doesn't really cut wood. That's what it is. So we're gonna put that on there. I like to give it a little roll, be careful so you don't cut yourself. I recommend if you're doing stuff like this, put a pair of gloves on, which I don't have on. So, but just be careful. Now, what's the proper tension of the chain? That is no good. And you wanna pick up on this bar a little bit because there's a little bit of slack in it. And you want that chain, I like it just touching. So if you touch it, it's not super tight, but just touch it. Now, I'm going to go cut one tree with this, and it's going to loosen up because it's going to stretch. Right out of the gate, your most stretching is going to happen right when you first start. And then I use this, to set it on the back of the tooth, and give it a run. Make sure everything's lining up good. Okay, very good. Now, first thing I like to do is get my rakers I'm gonna put a glove on because I slipped one time when I was young sharpening a chain and maybe you could see that scar on the top of my knuckle there I slipped and went across the top of the tooth took a big meaty hunk out of my finger first I'll take the rakers down in case I slip off a raker and hit the tooth then I get a final touch up with that that thing there the other file yeah that's what it is this file's about shot so, uh, since I'm only using about half the file, I take one full pass or two halves. And that's all I do right there. I've done these videos in the past. A lot of people have been asking lately, so I figured I'd do a quick one. And everyone's like, don't you use a gauge, don't you use uh, this, take the chain strip. No, I do it all by eye, by feel. I run the saw, I don't like how it's cutting. I can take a little more off rakers on one side or the other to straighten the chain out if it's cutting crooked or uh, things like that. It's stuff that just builds with time. Now, I'm not pushing real hard. Okay, that side's done. That quick it happens. Now, take our file. That's tight in there the first time because it's, Oh, David, don't kill me on that one. David Haley's going to follow that. But either way, it's a little hard to um, get your first pass because the clearances are real tight. One, and then a light one. One, a light one. Now some people say, oh, I'll see you take two strokes off one tooth and one stroke off the next. Sometimes you push that file through there and it just doesn't cut right. You can tell. And you'll be like, oh, I need an extra stroke to get a little more off. See, like, it's cutting nice now and I'm only doing one. That one didn't cut nice. That's all in feel, in sight. It just comes with time. There's days I'll sharpen this chain four or five times. I always sharpen by hand on chainsaw chains because I feel if you sharpen them with a sharpener, 
you can heat the tooth up real easy causing a temper issue in the steel which will also cause it to dull faster be brittle got everybody all right so now i'll go on and do the other side and we'll be ready to go so those are just tips like i said cut your first thing oh one more thing i never used to believe in this when i was young but i started blowing tips up a lot harder oh man you're in there you guys see that little hole right there on the top that's a grease hole you get this little pumper thing I bought this one about time for a new one, but they refill themselves. You know, you can refill them with the grease gun. Just usually a pump. There, until you see that little bubble. I'll just give it a little run. There's little roller bearings in there. Helps keep them from breaking up, blowing your tip out, blowing that sprocket out. So there it is. Um, hopefully, that guys helped. Uh, yeah, hopefully, it helped some of you guys, or you know, just interesting or. Maybe you think how I do it's wrong. Let me know. I mean, I'm open to all kind of new suggestions. That's what's great about this industry. You can learn something new every day. I don't know if you can see it. I gotta tap the screen so I can see. Right out. Right out. There's the dozer. That'll be probably the next video. We'll get some cutting in. So, all right, everybody. I'm gonna get to it here. I got crap to do and there's rain coming Saturday.